Americans. This is Democracy Now!, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. 95 out of every 100 American adults owns a cell phone today. And worldwide, three out of four adults now have cell phone access. The wireless industry is one of the fastest growing on Earth, raking in annual sales of $440 billion in 2016. But are cell phones safe? Well, a new investigation by the nation suggests that's a question that cell phone giants prefer you don't ask. The article by journalists Mark Hertzgard and Mark Dowie is headlined, How Big Wireless Made Us Think That Cell Phones Are Safe. The article notes that cell phones were first marketed to U.S. consumers in the 1980s without any government safety testing. Then, a decade later, one of the industry's own hand-picked researchers, George Carlo, reportedly told top company officials, including leaders of Apple, AT&T and Motorola, that some industry commission studies raised serious questions about cell phone safety. On October 7, 1999, Carlos sent letters to industry CEOs, urging them to give consumers, quote, the information they need to make an informed judgment about how much of this unknown risk they wish to assume. Instead, the Cellular Telecommunications and Internet Association reportedly tried to discredit Carlos' findings and had him physically removed from its premises during its annual conference in February 2000. The Nation magazine investigation notes Carlo's story evokes eerie parallels with two of the most notorious cases of corporate deception on record, the campaigns by the tobacco and fossil fuel industries to obscure the dangers of smoking and climate change, respectively. For more, we go to San Francisco to speak with one of the authors of this new investigation, Mark Hertzgard, the Nation's environment correspondent and investigative editor, author of seven books, including Hot, Living Through the Next Fifty Years on Earth. Mark, welcome back to Democracy Now! Um, talk about Hi, what you have found, what we do know about cell phone safety, and how dangerous are cell phones. Let me emphasize, Amy, our piece is not uh, saying that cell phones are safe or are not safe. Our piece is an investigative expose showing you how the cellular industry has worked for 25 years behind the scenes to convince you that cell phones are safe, when, in fact, if you look at the independently funded science, the picture is a lot more mixed than that. And as you mentioned, there's that smoking gun memo letter, I should say, from uh, George Carlo in 1999 telling the CEOs of all these big companies, look, this stuff is raising serious questions, especially about kids and cancer and genetic damage. And I think that's the real parallel with both big oil and big tobacco. In each case, these big companies were told privately by their own scientists that there's serious questions about your product, whether it be cigarettes or fossil fuels or cell phones. And in each case, those executives decided not to share that with the public, but rather to keep that information to themselves while telling the public and telling the press and telling policymakers there's no problem. Uh, there is a lot of evidence suggesting that we need to be a lot more careful about these cell phones. The World Health Organization has listed them as a possible carcinogen. And just last week, here in the United States, the National uh, Institutes of Health had a major study peer-reviewed about cell phone radiation. And the peer-review scientists, who are independent of government, said that there was, quote, clear evidence, unquote, that cell phones can cause cancer. And that is something that you have not read in the American media. And I have to say that that's another part of this story, Amy, is how the U.S. news organizations and journalists have been hoodwinked yet again by a corporate propaganda campaign uh, where we listen more to what the industry says than to what independent scientists are saying. And, Mark, could you uh, talk a little about the way in which um, wireless industries uh, have tried to influence the scientific research uh, on the effects, uh, possible effects of cell phone use? Sure. Uh, the, the term that they use is wargaming. They have wargamed the science. That comes from an internal memo in 1994 from Motorola, um, a major cell phone manufacturer, which at that point was already facing lawsuits from customers claiming that their brain tumors had come from Motorola-supplied uh, uh, equipment. Wargaming means a number of different things. It means funding science that is friendly to industry. 
It means discrediting science or attempting to discredit scientists that are critical of industry. And it means trying to put industry-friendly uh, scientists on key advisory boards, such as the World Health Organization. And our piece in The Nation magazine uh, documents how when the World Health Organization was preparing in the year 2011 to render a judgment on how likely cell phones are to cause cancer, the industry made sure to get a number of its scientists onto the advisory boards that, uh, that uh, consulted with the WHO on that decision. And that is a contrary to the conflict of interest rules that the WHO has, uh, but the, the industry managed to circumvent those. It put money into that process. And at the end of the day, in 2011, the WHO, World Health Organization, called cell phone radiation a possible carcinogen. But a number of the scientists who were on that uh, committee, who we interviewed, said that they wanted to call it a probable. And uh, one scientist even wanted to call it a known carcinogen. Mm. So later this year, the WHO is going to revisit this question of uh, cell phone radiation. And they told us that they will look very carefully at this recent study from last week by the uh, National Toxicology Program and the U.S. government that found clear evidence that cell phones can cause cancer. Mark, you wrote, the industry has also mounted a campaign to discredit Leonard Hardell, a Swedish professor of oncology serving on the working group. Hardell's studies, which found an increase in gliomas and acoustic neuromas in long-term cell phone users, were some of the strongest evidence that the group was considering. Um, gliomas, acoustic neuromas, explain what they are and what you feel has been suppressed or discredited. Well, Leonard Hardell, the Swedish scientist you mentioned, Amy, he was uh, the one scientist on that WHO committee who wanted to call cell phone radiation a known cancer risk, not probable, not possible, but known. That would be category one. And he did that on the basis of his studies of gliomas. They are a nasty uh, brain tumor, brain cancer, partly because there's a, it's very difficult to treat them. There, it's not like a, a, a specific uh, sort of nodule that you can take out. They kind of leak through the, the brain in, in long strands. And Hardell was especially concerned about what this means for children. Uh, and I should note here, Amy, that, uh, you know, the United States is, is quite different than other advanced countries on this. In Britain, in France, in Israel, the governments have issued very strict limitations on uh, cell phone use by children. In the public schools in France, there are no iPads. There is no wireless, partly for the reasons of addiction, but also because of these concerns about uh, health. And in the case of Leonard Hardell in Sweden, once he started to publish those uh, findings in 2002, the industry immediately uh, mobilized to have two of their friendly, industry-friendly scientists immediately put out a paper condemning Hardell. Well, we found out that those two scientists, at the very time that they were posing as independent scientists and saying that, Mr., that Dr. Hardell's findings were methodologically uh, in incoherent, they were consulting. <laughs> they were consulting to Motorola as expert witnesses in a brain tumor case. So who are you going to believe? Well, we have to leave it there, but we're going to do part two and post it as a web exclusive online at democracynow.org. There's just too much to talk about, from the Internet of Things, talking about 5G, and how the campaign here mirrors what happened with big tobacco. Uh, Mark Hertzgard's new special investigation will link to is headlined, How Big Wireless Made Us Think That Cell Phones Are Safe. Uh, Democracy Now! produced by Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Dina Guzder, Nermeen Shea, Carla Wills, Laura Gattesdiener, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Masood, Charina Nadura, Nat Needham, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, Paul Huckabee, our engineers. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Shaikh. Check out democracynow.org for video and audio podcasts and transcripts.